Hi, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to our morning meeting with ambassadors. We are here with uh, Skeeter, our little eastern gray squirrel, who really wants to come out and say hello to all of you guys. He's currently wrestling around in his blankets, uh, but he's being really goofy right now. Um, so he's going to come out and say hello to us. We're in our she shed at the moment um, because we you know, he likes to run around and we didn't want to do that in our office space where people were working. So, um, he's going to pop out and say hello to everybody. He's very interested in where we are and the food that he's going to be getting. So let me flip the camera around so you guys can see him. Hi, what do you think? You want to come out? So this is just the little carrier that we use to, um, <laughs> to let Skeeter run around uh, if we take him outside of his enclosure. So um, this is just how we like safely travel from place to place with him. Where are you? So you can see he's kind of checking out where he is. He's very excited this morning. Hi, what are you doing? Uh, Skeeter came to us because of uh, some neurological damage that he sustained when he Hi. When he fell from his tree, he most likely went looking for mom. Um, she may have gotten caught by a predator, hit by a car or something, but he uh, ventured out of the nest to go looking for food, um, and he fell and sustained some head trauma. So he lives with us now permanently at the center because of that head trauma, and you can kind of, I don't know, tell a little bit that he's just a little extra squirrely is what we like to say. Um, He's very sweet though, and we've had him since he was very young, so he's really used to people. Squirrels are making all sorts of uh, movements this time of year, so you guys are probably seeing them quite a bit. Uh, definitely, if you are here, let us know. Leave your name and where you're from in the comments, and I'll try to say hello to everyone. Uh, we have also a donation button on all of these videos, so if uh, you are able to, Donate, that is fantastic, and we greatly appreciate it. It goes to help support the care of this little guy. Um, so Skeeter is an eastern gray squirrel. Good morning, Zoe and Yvette. Hello. Um, he is a very common species that we see all the time around here, but he is actually really special. Gray squirrels are not necessarily given all of the um, all of the credit that they're due. A lot of times people will see them as nuisances or pests, but um, they're actually really intelligent, really smart, and um, do very good things for our ecosystems, particularly our oak forests. So um, they are very special, and we certainly think Skeeter is very special. Hi, Lori. Hi, Michelle. Good morning. Um, Skeeter is actually about six years old now, and in the wild, you really wouldn't expect to see them get to be that um, old because they usually um are you know not making it past much past one year if they're very lucky but um in the wild they can live to be about five or six and then um in captivity they live much longer so we're hoping to have skeeter for a long long time i have something special for you skeeter what's that oh my goodness good morning nicole hi um so i just gave skeeter an acorn and you can see what fast work he is making of that acorn he is doing just an incredible job of ripping off of the shell off the shell and getting to the little peanut type nut that's inside where are you going he says i gotta go bury this somewhere oh my goodness <laughs> um so you can see skeeter kind of walks a little bit funny where are you going with that come back. <laughs> um, but squirrels are famous for doing this. They will take acorns and they will cache them, which means that they will stash them someplace and save them for later. And squirrels are famous for doing this with acorns in particular, but they'll do it with nuts and seeds as well. And uh, what they're doing is they're making sure that they have enough food for when times are leaner, when it's winter, um, and they also are making sure that they're keeping any food that they do find away from other squirrels that might want to eat them. So Skeeter is looking around trying to find a good place to go to either eat this acorn or stash it. And usually when we're out and about it, outside of his enclosure, he will eat it rather than stash it because he kind of knows he's not going to be back in this area anytime soon. 
Uh, good morning, Anastasia. Good morning, Nevitz. Hello. He does have a lot of energy. He is definitely a, um, a morning person or a morning squirrel. Good morning, Brittany. Um, usually we see Skeeter when we get here in the morning. We feed him his breakfast and then he sleeps for the rest of the day. So these guys are pretty active in their early mornings. And then um, they are somewhat a little active at um, around dusk as well, but they, um, for the most part, are some morning squirrels. Good morning, Robin and Charlie in South Portland. Hello. Um, so these guys are famous for making those caches of acorns, and these acorns are usually from different varieties of oak trees. And so when they go and they, you know, they bury their acorns in the ground, they are essentially planting them. And they can make a lot, a lot of caches. They can make up to a thousand different little hiding spots throughout the year. And they usually only recover about a quarter of those over the course of the winter, which, you know, we always say, oh, the forgetful, forgetful squirrel, he only remembers where he put a quarter of his acorns, but he was caching a thousand acorns. So um, they, uh, they all are still recovering 250 approximate acorns, which is, a lot and um, they do have excellent memory they have a really really good spatial memory which allows them to remember where they put all those acorns and um, oh you're just going straight for the okay <laughs> and um, they can really you know use that as like a map to get to where they have stashed their acorns so they are very good at remembering where they've put all these things good morning Jackie good morning Matt Michelle and Maddie and Tilly Hi, Sue. Hi, Ryan. Where are you going? He says, I gotta go. I gotta go stash this somewhere. Oh my God. <laughs> He's definitely a goof. Good morning, Nikki. Hi. Are you gonna put it back in there? He says, can I save this for later? Will you bring this back to my bed with me? Hi. <laughs> so we say that Skeeter is a little extra squirrely um, and he does get a little hyper, but um, he does have some some uh, brain injuries, which makes him a little dizzy sometimes. He does get like vertigo almost. And then he also uh, kind of spins in circles sometimes. You'll see him chasing his tail, which is um, not normal and a lot would be really dangerous if he uh, did that in the wild because a predator could easily catch him while he was doing that. But he is um, very safe and sound with us and usually is... Uh, do, does really well. Um, he's usually pretty normal. The heat does tend to make him a little bit worse, but he does really good. Uh, Michelle would like to know how long squirrels can live. So Michelle, uh, in the wild, these squirrels usually don't get much past a year, but they, um, they can live up to five or six years if they get past that first year of life. And then, um, and then in captivity, they can live much, much longer. So we've seen squirrels living up to like 20 years in captivity. Um, so we're hoping to have Skeeter for a long time. Um, he is around, uh, he is six right now, seven, almost seven. Um, and we, you know, that is obviously older than we would expect to see a squirrel in the wild, but there are squirrels in captivity that live much, much longer. All right, let's see. Lori, oak trees are critical. Thank you. Um, so oak trees are a wonderful host tree for these guys. They help to plant all of those acorns in the ground, and the ones they don't find obviously can become planted and uh, sprout as oak trees. Oak trees are very important uh, for habitat for animals. Hi, there's more right there. Look at all that stuff. Um, they provide a wonderful habitat for a lot of different animals for nesting. They also do provide a home for all of those caterpillars that you mentioned, Laurie. That's wonderful. And um, the acorns that they drop are actually a really critical source of food for not just squirrels, but many, many species in the forest. About 90% of all uh, mammal species in the forest rely on acorns in some way for food and um, that is you know that is quite a lot so these guys really do help by cultivating those forests um, they also are you know food for a lot of different animals we think of you know squirrels as being a very typical prey species for many of our raptors for um, many larger mammals so just you know they are a wonderful 
cultivator of oak forests in their own right, but they're also a really important food source for a lot of guys. So we get a lot of questions. Uh, right now in our clinic, we have about 25 gray squirrel babies that we're raising, and people will ask us all the time, you know, why are you rescuing squirrels? Aren't they... Uh, you know, aren't there plenty of them? Uh, maybe more than some people would like. And, you know, we always say that not only are they very important in their own right for sustaining their ecosystems, and they do have a very critical role, but they also are um, supporting all of those, we would say, maybe like more charismatic species that people really are drawn to, like our, um, our hawks, eagles, things like that. So um, they are very important throughout the food chain. Um, and we really, we love learning about these guys. They're very intelligent. They don't get a lot of credit for their smarts, but they are very smart and, um, and have wonderful memories as well. Uh, Nicole Skeeter is about seven. He should be turning seven this season. Hi, where are we going? Uh, good morning, Robert, Robert from Rochester. Hello. Good morning, Anne. Um, so these guys, good morning, Kim. Hi. And Michelle, um, Anne has a question about do they reuse their nests and these guys usually will build um, leaf nests called drays and usually what we're seeing when we look at a dray is just it looks like just a clump of leaves that was accidentally put in the crook of a tree and um, so they will reuse it if it's um, if it's still there but they are very fragile and delicate and usually our squirrels will make more than one nest for that reason because their their nests can easily get blown down and um and in, you know if they get infested with mites or or parasites or anything like that they're gonna want to <laughs> i know they're gonna want to make sure that they um they have another place to nest and take their babies and this is why when we get those calls about baby squirrels, we always recommend that people wait to see what mom is going to do because mom most likely has a backup nest somewhere that she can relocate the babies to if one of her nests gets destroyed. Um, so they will use their nests and um, make nests frequently, uh, but their nests don't usually last very long. So reusing a nest might not be possible, but they, uh, they may reuse some of the materials. What are you doing? He says, I don't want any of these tiny little sunflower seeds that are hauled. I don't like those. I want to use my teeth. You are so spoiled. Uh, Michelle asked, do squirrels only eat acorns? That's a great question. Squirrels eat a lot of things. Squirrels are actually omnivores, so we don't tend to think about them eating meat, but they have been observed eating um, songbirds and um, other small mammals, which is not pleasant to think about, but they are known to raid nests, eat eggs, eat little babies, a baby songbirds. So they, um, they are certainly omnivores. They also eat a fair amount of berries and vegetation. And then the nuts and seeds do make up most of their diet, especially when these things are in season. So you can see he's just loving the sunflower seeds that we give him. These are like a special treat for Skeeter because he, um, they are full of fat, full of uh, good oils and um, nutrition, but they can certainly pack on the pounds on a captive squirrel. So we usually give them the, to the to him pretty sparingly. Um, he gets them on his little platter, his little salad every morning, but he usually only gets a few. And they're his absolute favorite. So the black oil sunflower seeds are amazing, and he really, really loves them. Um, so just a quick reminder, everybody, we do have a donate button on our videos. Uh, if you like the center's work and want to support us, that's a great way to do so. We, um, we do put all of those donations right back into the care of this little guy here. So we really appreciate any donations that you guys have. Also, please feel free to ask me any other questions that you have. Um, I'm really loving being able to talk about Skeeter. He's fantastic and he usually doesn't get to go on very many programs um, just because people tend to uh, want to see Henry or Ophelia and Skeeter, you know, he likes to meet people but he's not the biggest fan of travel. So uh, we love being able to show you guys Skeeter. He's really quite cute. Good morning. They do love pumpkins. Oh my goodness. So they will eat a lot of those harvest goods in the summer. They, um, they will eat gourds and apples and pumpkins, anything sugary that will help them put on fat stores for the winter, they're gonna love. And that's also the time of year when they're drop, when our, our oak trees are dropping lots of acorns so they can harvest those and cache those. 
Yeah, I know. Where are you going? Uh, Stephanie has a comment about squirrels, observing squirrels. So what's cool about squirrels is they're often many folks first foray into observing nature, right? They're um, many times the the only way or the first way that many kids get to see nature, get to learn about how to react to nature or respond to nature. Um, so they're a really good way into becoming an observer of nature more frequently. Um, and they are also, you know, they're so interesting to watch. They have a lot of different um, behaviors that they exhibit. So they're really cool. They are very smart. They actually um, are able to kind of put themselves in the shoes of other squirrels, which is uh, something called called the theory of mind that um, pe psychologists used to think only people could do, like imagining what another person is thinking. Um, they used to think that only only people really did this, but it is not really true. Squirrels do this all the time. They will uh, have an acorn that they want to cash, and if they see another squirrel watching them kind of trying to uh, steal their food, they will pretend that they're restoring their food somewhere. They'll, you know, make a big show out of burying it in the ground. And then uh, what they'll do is they'll actually hide it in their little cheeks instead. And uh, as the other squirrel is trying to steal it from where they just pretended to plant it, they'll go plant it somewhere, somewhere else. They'll go cash it someplace else. So they're able to kind of put themselves in the shoes of another squirrel to realize that that squirrel wants to eat, get my food. I'm going to pretend to hide it from that squirrel. So they're actually very, very intelligent to be able to do that. Um, let's see. Anne asks, are they monogamous? No. Uh, usually what happens is um, these guys will go through a mating season pretty much as soon as it's warm. These guys will start chasing each other around trees. If you see that in the spring and summer, that's what, that's what they're doing. They're kind of going through that mating um, time and the males will usually be um, just around for the mating and then the females will raise the babies on her own. So um, the males can have many different litters in one season. It really just depends on, um, you know, who he mates with, but the females will usually have their own one little litter. Oh yeah. Yeah, you found the jackpot. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yvette, for donating. You're so sweet. Um, yes, yeah, some are, these guys are territorial about their, um, their areas where they're living. Um, they are going to um, chase other squirrels away from really good food sources or from their areas. And then usually younger guys will be a little bit less so. Yeah, so they'll, um, they'll be a little bit more territorial if they are more established. Hi. Hello. Um, Anne would like to know how well they coexist with red squirrels. So what's interesting is that in many areas of the world, gray squirrels are considered to be an invasive species. So in Europe, for example, or in, um, in England and Ireland, these guys are considered an invasive species and have done quite a bit of damage to red squirrel populations just because they've outcompeted them or in some cases preyed upon them because they're, they are so tiny. But, where are you going, Skeeter? But in our area, they do um, both exist naturally. Usually, <laughs> usually the gray squirrel will live in, um, you know, a more mixed forest with lots of oaks and pines and things like that. They're also very urban. Um, and then red squirrels will live in more of a densely packed conifer fir forest and don't tend to overlap don't touch my fingers, don't tend to overlap, but red squirrels are kind of expanding their range into all sorts of different kinds of forests, including forests that these guys might live in. So in our area, they do seem to coexist pretty well um, because they are both native species and the red squirrel is figuring out kind of how to live um, in areas that the gray squirrel also lives in. But in other parts of the world, they are considered an invasive species. So that's a really good question. We have both here at the center. Okay, yeah, you're done? <laughs> He's like, I think I left some some seeds back in here. Hi, good morning, you're so cute. Um, how long do the babies stay with their mother in the nest before they leave the nest for the first time? That's a really good question. So we have um, about, you know, eight weeks of 
uh, bottle feeding before these guys are really starting to be weaned and um, going out on their own. So the babies that we have in the clinic, we can estimate they're somewhere between like, you know, two to six weeks old, and then they will um, go and venture from the nest and um, and still be around, not usually nursing very much at all, but um, maybe once or twice a day, and then mom will quickly have another litter if she is able to. These guys can have two to three litters in a season. It just depends on how long they have. So um, we'll see a wave of squirrels usually in the spring once it gets warm. We'll see another one in the fall usually, but then we'll also get a trickle of them throughout the summer. Um, they really, really do take an opportunity of, of as much time as they can. Good morning, you're so cute. Uh, why, when they drag their bottoms or do the army crawl, are they peeing? Um, I don't believe so. I mean, you can't really see any urine on the floor. Skeeter just tends to walk that way when he's on a surface that he's a little bit more unfamiliar with. Um, and I think it has to do more with his different disabilities. Um, I think they are definitely better climbers, right? So they are more, um, evolved to be climbing up vertically and not so much walking around on the ground. Um, so Skeeter definitely does walk a little funny when he's on a flat surface, um, but they can walk normally. There you go. That's a good walk. But he is also has does have some neurological issues, so that's why his gait might be a little funny. Where are you going? He says, I don't think I've ever been in this space before. This is all so new and I smell things. Oh my goodness. What do you smell? He is so cute. Where are you going? You can't go outside. Good morning from New Jersey. And uh, squirrels are, because they're very intelligent, they're very easy to, um, to kind of make friends with. A lot of folks will have squirrels that live on their property that um, they recognize over and over again that they get to know. Um, we don't necessarily recommend becoming overly friendly with squirrels because they are still um, a wild animal that can carry diseases that are transmissible to us. Not so many as we usually attribute to mammals, but um, still possible. It's also not really um, wise to necessarily get these guys near your domestic animals or, um, or yourself, but they are known to become quite um, unperturbed by people whose property they live on, especially if those people are known to give them food. So they can come a become acclimated to people very quickly. And because of their, um, because they're a little bit more, I would say, daring and um, confident than other small mammals, they are, that's a big part of why they're so successful in like city parks and, um, in urban areas is because they can survive around people. They are great omnivores and they also, um, can get around and get acclimated to the presence of people very quickly. So they can definitely be friendly, but we just don't want them to be overly friendly, right? I know. He's like, who me? No, I would never. You're so cute. Uh, Maybe. So yeah, I think when they're on the ground and they are walking this and kind of exploring or on an unsure terrain that they might do that army crawl thing. I've, I've seen it in Skeeter quite a bit. You know, that's not really where we should be going. That's, that's not really appropriate. You should get off of me. Yeah. Thank you. Good boy. Uh, we try not to encourage these guys to sit on us or to, you know, climb us or anything. Cause that's not, that's not appropriate. Is that a trash can? Are you going to eat out of that? Oh my God. He's having a great time. He, I don't think he's ever been in this space before. So now that we've run out of food, he's kind of like, where, what else can I get? Where else can I go? What's out there? Oh my God. Hello. And it's all safe in here. We've skeeter proofed it. No, 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 no. He just tried to get on my shoulder and I was, I had to stop him. You're not climbing me. I'm not a tree. You're such a good boy. Uh, they do use their tails for balance quite a bit. They also use their tails uh, kind of like a blanket. So when they're curled up in bed in their little nests, they will use their tails to um, to wrap around themselves. They also use them, their tails kind of like umbrellas. Um, so they will, you know, have their tails over their faces and over their heads when they're out, if it's raining or snowing. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, 
Why do squirrels have fuzzy? So that gets at why they're they have fuzzy tails. Get off of me! I don't have any more food. He's like, no, you usually do though. No, no. <laughs> You're so naughty. Um, yeah, so they do have the fuzzy tails to help to keep themselves warm, especially in the winter when they're in their nests. They'll curl up with them like a blanket. So it's kind of like if you've ever seen a husky curl up and cover its face with its tail. It's the same thing. Skeeter, that's not cool. Get down. Get down. We're, we're experiencing some squirrel teenage behavior. There you go. Thank you. Naughty, naughty. Um, yeah, so he is very, um, he's very excited and curious, but he always wants more food, and so he's, he's acting out. Oh my god, we're so excited. Yeah. <laughs> you are loving this. Yeah. You're getting your aerobics in for the day. Exploring. We've uh, done quite a number on all of these seeds here. He doesn't seem to be interested so much in the hauled seeds, so these are like hulled sunflower seeds. He doesn't seem to really want these. I'm wondering if they maybe went rancid and he, um, or if he just really prefers these black oil sunflower seeds. You can see that um, he's taken the seed out of its shell here. So it's kind of like if you eat sunflower seeds, there'll be that husk left over. He rips those apart with his teeth and he does the same thing for these acorns here. Um, they have very, very sharp, uh, sharp front teeth and those teeth um, are bright orange and they help them to crunch through uh, acorn shells and sunflower seed shell husks um, and also chew bark on trees. Are you going to go back to bed now? What do you think? He's like, there's no food in here. What happened? Oh my goodness. You can also see he does have some red on him so we do get a lot of questions about red versus gray squirrels because red squirrels and gray squirrels, um, you know, sometimes they, they have a similar silhouette, but red squirrels do tend to be about half the size of gray squirrels. And they um, they also are very, very entirely red with a white belly. Whereas gray squirrels tend to have gray and a little bit of red on their backs and their tails and their faces, but they, um, they wouldn't be entirely gray or entirely uh, red. They actually can occur in kind of a, we call them melanistic squirrels. So they're black. Um, and you'll see those guys in different pockets. Don't jump on me. They'll see, you'll see these guys in different pockets throughout the country. There's some in, um, up in Northern New York in, no, <laughs> you gotta get down. He's like, but I want the food. <laughs> He's convinced that I have a secret stash. I don't, but sometimes I will put an extra acorn or something in my pocket and he'll actually go into my pocket to get it. They have excellent noses, so they can smell where those are. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for donating. That's so sweet. Um, thank you, Nevitz. Is, uh, uh, Nevitz, you're welcome. Uh, Anne would like to know why do squirrels at times make a screeching sound and their tails flicker? That's a really good question. These guys make all sorts of noises. Are you on Kristen's bag? Nice. Uh, make all sorts of noises when they're upset or warning people or other animals that they're not happy or that they see them. So you'll see squirrels if you're like walking your dog around or if you're, um, even you, your presence might uh, aggravate a squirrel, they will start chattering their teeth together, uh, which sounds like a little clicking. They'll start going, uh, making kind of screeching noises or screaming noises. They'll flicker their tails around and that is a sign that they're agitated. Um, and they, um, they uh, will also then, if they get really upset, go into growls and screaming and all of that sort of stuff. But they, um, have like a, a progression of sounds that they make. No. Oh my goodness. You're so naughty. Get down. Get down. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So Zoe says she has seen a melanistic gray squirrel. Yeah. So they have, um, they have, they're completely black and it's just, um, basically like hyperpigmentation in their skin and in their coats. They also, um, do occur occasionally in, um, in an albino. You can see an albino squirrels or leucistic squirrels, which are underpigmented, although they do tend to stick out like a sore thumb. So they are much more susceptible to predation. 
uh, which is why they have all of the beautiful coloring that they have is it's um, it's really hi hello oh you want a little scratch so we never touch Skeeter with our bare hands because he has those sharp teeth but he does like to get little scratches if we're if our hands are covered <laughs> but he is um, he is still a wild animal so we still protect ourselves and um, he is with, has been with us for a long time, and uh, we have built up a relationship over the course of our time together. But um, he, you know, certainly could still bite if he wanted to. Oh, are you grooming? That's so sweet. Yeah. Are you grooming yourself? I love it. So cute. Um, he does have a lot of energy, but it goes away really fast. He's like a flash, and then... Um, he, he burns out pretty quickly, so he'll go to bed after he gets his um, his platter and stay in bed. Hey! No chewing on things. Um, he'll go to bed and then stay uh, there for most of the rest of the day. He'll come out a little bit in the afternoon, but for the most part, he's going to stay asleep for the rest of the day. But they are very active first thing in the morning. Thank you so much, Deborah, for donating. You're so sweet. You guys are amazing. We really appreciate all of the support from everyone that watches these. We've really enjoyed doing them and staying connected with you guys. Um, it's been it's been so crazy, but we're really happy to be uh, able to share these guys with you, especially the guys like Skeeter and Artemis who don't travel so much. They're either retired or don't enjoy travel, or you know they just don't get the opportunity to travel as much. What are you doing, Skeeter? But um, but they do. They do still like love to teach and love to interact with us. So it's really great that we're able to show you guys. Skeeter, can you come down? He's all up in Kristen, our executive director's bag. So I apologize, Kristen, if you have Skeeter poop. Oh my goodness. Uh, so they probably do sleep for at least like, I don't know, 15 hours a day, I would guess. I'll, at least half of the day. I, I would be surprised if it's not more. Thank you so much, John. You're so sweet. Okay, we are going to wrap up. If anyone has any last questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But Skeeter, I think, is um is has pooped himself out. He is he is rather, I think, perturbed. There's no more food. <laughs> He's run out of places to explore. So we're gonna wrap up unless anyone else has any questions. I'm happy to answer them here. And then we can also go through the comments later if we didn't get to anybody. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us. We really do appreciate it. And we're going to um, sign off. Skeeter, you want to say goodbye? Come here. Come here. Skeeter. He doesn't actually listen very well. Okay. Come on. Good boy. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, we will be back again tomorrow. I know, I know. Okay, bye Skeeter.